Last week we introduced to you our new project cars and today we are diving right in. It's already time to pull the Mitsubishi's motor, starting by taking off the hood and the fenders because this thing needs a refresh badly. daunting to start taking things apart on if we're being honest because being an all-wheel drive car we're dealing with a bit more in the front end plus Mitsubishi loves its vacuum line so that gave us a huge headache as we went but all we could really do was just start plugging away taking things apart marking bolts and then getting things done oh, <laughs> oh no oh that's the worst coolant or oil I've ever seen that's the oil oh I think, the head, I think the head gasket's fine. Full of coolant. I think the head gasket's fine. <laughs> oh no. I think the head gasket's fine. Oh no. <laughs> I've never seen blue oil before. <laughs> I think the head gasket's fine. This, this is the real issue. Just the fact that they have spacer on spacer. Oh my. That's great. That's great. Let's put these back on for now. So quick update on everything where we're at. It's looking pretty good. So if we have just about everything disconnected on the top half, over here was the biggest issue. It looks a lot messier than it is. There are just 10 billion vacuum hoses on this thing. I'm gonna be happy to have all this gone as well with the ABS delete. But this is all disconnected. Wiring harness is tugged off to the side. Clutch is tucked off to the side with the slave cylinder, the throttle cable tugged off to the side. The throttle body is taken off and leaned back because it has all these vacuum lines on the top, on the bottom attached to it. All of those right in there. Honestly, this is just going to be one big pain with vacuum lines. Why did they even think this was a good idea to start with? It's so unnecessary. But coming on to this side of the car, everything else is disconnected except for one hose that is tucked away under here I missed, but that'll come off, well, I want to say easily, but I missed it, so it's in a hard place to reach. After that, we have the motor mouse to disconnect, and then we have to take the transmission off and everything else underneath. So what we're going to do next is we are going to pull the axles out from both sides. We have, I was about to explain how we have two axles. I think you guys are a little more competent than I'm trying to explain. Two axles in the front, two axles in the back, you know, four wheels on a car fifth axle in the trunk for the spare tire it's common knowledge and then from there we have miscellaneous things to take off we have the support bar across here we have to dismount the exhaust the transfer case the bottom side of the transmission bolts and then we can go ahead and yank the car out through the top we're making good progress so far but no progress is being made if i'm not working on the car and just talking to you guys so uh back to work uh so immediately after i said that people came over and i, I talked and did it did it i didn't get any work done so I got something else to do anyway, check it out. So our friends over at Flash Shark sent this out. These are lights for the inside of the car. So you got your boring old interior. It may look cool on the outside eventually. Might eventually have an engine that runs. You might eventually want the inside to look good too. So anytime you look on the inside of the car, you'll notice it's dark. Dun, dun, dun. 
these are the solution to that. These are ambient lights for underneath the seats and the dash. So when you open the car and turn it on, you have that nice looking glow. It comes with four LED strips, two for the front seats and two for the back seats that we will be able to fit right under very easily. It runs off a cigarette lighter that you push on and push off to get it powered. The cigarette lighter is also wired into the on switch for the ignition. So if we want to, we could take the cigarette cigarette lighter port out, move it, hide it, and get these all tucked away snugly. We're also able to use an app to control the lights as well as we have the whole color spectrum to work from. So whatever color we want, we can go with. This means that we're not bound by any paint shop. I could paint the car rainbow colors and the inside would still match. But the first thing that we're going to need to do in order to get these installed is to clear out the inside. Now this isn't quite as easy as it may seem because uh, there's no dash to attach the lights to. It's kind of back there somewhere. So that's where we're starting. Let's hide some wiring and get this all connected. So inside the car here, we have a couple options for where to plug it in. The first is right here, there's a cigarette lighter, and then up front we have another cigarette lighter. I'm going to use the front one because it states that it has voltage on there. Some cigarette lighters I'm not sure about, they just act a little weird, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this front one up by the stereo for now. No particular reason why I'm doing this one over the other one. Eventually I would like to wire it in individually by cutting the wires and then tapping it into these wires for the cigarette lighter, so that way it's not sticking out, but for the time being, we're gonna go ahead and use that so that way I don't jump the gun and skip too many steps because I'd really like to make sure that it works. Also, not having a battery on this car kind of sucks right now because the seat is super high. I just don't fit. And I also can't move the seat back. This is really not the most flattering angle of me right now. Cars can be a pain sometime. So here's the issue we ran into. First off, the cigarette lighters aren't getting any power, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Second thing, I went and I got a cigarette lighter to USB adapter, plugged it into the USB on the stereo system, and then it immediately just blew out the USB. So uh, I checked all the fuses under the dash, and they all seem to be good. Well, I mean, they are good. You can tell when the wire's connected. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I checked the ones in the dash, under the dash, and the ones in the engine bay. I'm not sure if there's another one under the passenger side footwell that I need to check. That's the next place I'm going to look, but I'm not entirely sure why it's not working because it is, it is actually connected underneath the cigarette lighter itself, so a little confusing. But the controller does turn on when I put it in my Mitsubishi. Say hello Mitsubishi. I'm also using this battery to connect because there's no battery in here right now, so stealing. So I do know it turns on and it did flash on for a split second before it blew up USB adapter, so it works but I just can't fully show you, so I gotta get this figured out. I finally got the lights to work and they're awesome. There's so many different options for colors. You could have them flash, you can have them fade, you could have a solid color, you can do white, dark, you could even change the dimness on them. But one of the coolest things is that you could have them react to sound, so they'll stay as a solid color or fade between colors until they hear music or a sound play, and then they'll start flashing. You could have it be a slow flash, a steady flash, a rhythm flash, or a stroke flash. These lights have no bounds. Well, well, I mean, they have some bounds, but I mean, come on. These things are pretty cool.
that's super cool. <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna be this awesome. I had to run it through the USB, like a USB power strip, then to a USB to cigarette lighter, and then to the program thing itself. Huge disclaimer, you don't need to do that. This is this is a my car issue. This is because my car doesn't have the cigarette lighters working, so I had to find a way around it. You just plug it into your cigarette lighter and it works just fine. It did on this one. You know that's pretty cool. But that's it for this video this time. Good start to the 3000 GT project. The engine is just about completely out. As I mentioned right before I got distracted and did the cool lights inside the car. The top end is disconnected. Just need to work on the bottom end now before we can yank it out from the top. And then next episode, we should be able to get this out and start going through inspecting everything. Because there is a lot wrong with it, as you saw. We need to clean it up. But that's gonna be it for this one. I hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget, well, I mean, you can't forget. But if you could, I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe. It actually helps me out a lot. And the more of you guys who actually subscribe, the more I'm able to produce content. And that's not me saying it's actually true because more viewers generates the ability for me to produce more. So please, if you can, if not, well, I mean, free country, you can still watch my videos. So, but please subscribe if you can, that'd be great. Dislike, unsubscribe, hit in the comments. Bye.